Hello everybody, this is Gamergar. Welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For today's video, I'm going to show you some glitches that will make you incredibly rich incredibly fast. These are game breaking glitches. So let's jump into the video. Let's look at the glitches that we have for you today and let's have some fun. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so when Stardew Valley content is released, which is every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday, and we also do live streams every Friday at 9 o'clock British Standard Time, you will be notified. As you can see, the channel has now tons of Stardew Valley content for you to enjoy. The first glitch we're going to talk about today is how to spawn in items depending on what you selected your name as. So I'm just going to change my name here. Instead of using a regular name, I'm going to put in item codes. Now there will be a link in the description that will bring you to a page that will show you all of the available items you can spawn into the game depending on what you select your name as. As we can see here as well that because I've put in some item codes, we get a message at the bottom saying Mr. Key <laughs> is disappointed in us. He thought we'd want to beat the game fair and square. So that's actually very funny. Um, the best way to get the items to spawn is to go to the saloon and talk to Gus. And every time he says your name, you will get the items. But what he's really doing is calling out the item codes. So the item codes that we have are for the Legend Fish, the Prismatic Shard and the Galaxy Soul. But you can very easily change these by going to the Statue of Illusions and putting in different item codes. The reason why I'm using these item codes is because the Legend Fish is one of the highest setting items in the game. Another way you can do this is by simply going to Marnie. Purchase a chicken since it's the cheapest animal you can get from her. And when you purchase a chicken, you can give it a name. Instead of giving it a regular name, use one of the item codes from the link in the description. So we're going to actually put in three item codes here for this chicken. We just have to make sure that we put in square brackets. And we're going to put in 896. And then we're going to close the bracket. Followed by an open bracket, 74, close the bracket, and then we can put in another open bracket, 163, close the bracket, press OK. Marnie will say, great, I'll send the, and then she calls out the item codes, and that gives us again the legend, the prismatic shard, and the galaxy soul. Another way to capitalize on this glitch is to ring Clint and ask him when he is open. He will occasionally say your name on the telephone, which will prompt the codes to activate, and that will spawn the items into your inventory. This is an absolutely magnificent way to get tons of money early on in the game. You can abuse this so easily, especially if you visit Gus in the saloon and he'll tell, tell you what your name is. The next glitch we're going to talk about is one that was recently found out by a Stardew Valley content creator. We can use this to scam here. We're just going to start off small just to show you how it works. For this to work, you need the artisan profession, which increases all your artisan goods by 40%. If you have that profession, simply walk up to Pierre and sell him an item. Make sure the item is an artisan item. We're going to set him wine here. Take notice of the price, 700 gold for this wine. So we have just sold Pierre wine for 700 gold. We can buy back this wine for 700 gold no problem but what we're going to do instead is we're going to go to the statue of uncertainty we are going to change our farming profession so that we do not select the artisan profession when we go to sleep this means all artisan goods will be 40 percent less so just for the sake of arguments we're going to go with agriculturists we're going to go back to pierre the next day and now look at what happened we can purchase the wine from him for 500 gold so we, if we purchase this wine back, we have basically scammed Pierre out of 200 gold. And you can capitalize on this by selling him a lot more artisan goods. Take a look at the stack of wine that I have there, 999 angel fruit wine. So an example would be that you sell him that when you have the artisan profession, change your professions around, go to sleep and buy it back the next day. And if you keep doing this, you will end up with hundreds of billions of gold. Uh, by, by just keep doing this method over and over again. So all you have to do is go to Pierre, sell him some items with the artisan profession, change the profession to something else, go back to him the next day and buy the items back. It's a simple rinse and repeat and you'll make yourself an absolute fortune using this method. Next up, let's talk about clay farming. 
So clear farming is a great way to get tons of money in the game early and if you do it right you can set yourself up for a very very strong year one. It's also very important to click on the option here to always show tool tilt location. This makes it extremely easy to make sure you do this correctly. So all you do is hoe and pickaxe the ground until you get a piece of clay. When this happens you simply go up one tile and to the right twice. When this is done, just hold the ground six times like this and you're going to get lots of clay. After you've done it six times, simply walk over to the left until you've lined up yourself with the first hoeing spot. Hit the ground, you're going to get a piece of clay. Continue on the process that you did the first time four times. So that's the third hoeing spot, that is the fourth hoeing spot. This is called the 6-4 formation. After this, go back down to your original hoeing spots and just hoe up from them once each time for a total of six times for more clay. Do this as well with the original four. Now I can't hoe here, so instead what you do is you hoe in any other place that will move the cycle along so you then go to the next spot, which is the second from the four combination. Do this and you're gonna get a lot more clay. When this is done, you've more or less finished the cycle. To start a new cycle, go to the second original hoe spot, go down one and go to the right once hold the ground and then you will start anew so you're going to go up six times like this then you're going to go up four times then you're going to go one across and then you're going to start all over again you can do this in winter as well except you won't get clay in winter instead you will get winter forgeables so you're going to get snow yams and winter roots and you can make a lot of money from this especially if you're looking to make tea saplings or if you're just looking to have a huge forageable farm so if you do it in winter on the beach, you're going to get an absolute ton of winter forageables. As you can see here, I'm going to have no shortage of winter roots or snow yams. It's a magnificent method to get tons of money in winter if you're looking for something to do. Because as we all know, sometimes in winter, there isn't a whole lot of stuff to do. The next glitch, I'm going to show you how to glitch out of the map here and how to get to the mines on day one and how to get into the quarry cave on day one. As you can see here, I'm spamming my site. You can spam any weapon or tool until you go off screen. I've just equipped a leak here so I can see myself. So what you do now is you run straight over to the right of the map until you can't move anymore. When you get to the very right of the map, just go straight up, just like this. And when you get up to the very top here, when you can't go anymore, just go to the left. And you can swing down here then by these broken tiles that separate the Stardew Valley from the quarry. And all you have to do then is get yourself a chair. Just put the chair right there, as you can see from the gameplay. Jump on the chair. Make sure you, make sure you collect your chair again because you will need it again. And this is how you get into the mines on day one. So let's go into the mines right now. As we can see, there's a big boulder block in our way. There's a Georgia co-worker trying to get rid of that, but it's not going to stop us, of course. When you get into the mines, Marlin will give you a rusty sword. So you can just do the mines as per normal, or you can put the chair straight after the mine cart there. You can go along this way. This will take you out of bounds from the game. So just swing yourself around like this. And if you keep going, eventually you will be able to go into the quarry cave. You can also get to the dwarf there too if you want to get to him early. But because we don't have the dwarvish translation guide, he isn't much use to us at the moment. So what we do now is we put a chair right down here. Because the quarry cave is connected to the regular cave. And we can now go into the quarry cave if we so wish. Getting into the quarry cave early can get you the golden sight. It is incredibly hard to get because the floating skulls will take quite a chunk held off you but if you can get it early you will be off to a great start next up let's talk about the statue of perfection duplication glitch if you hit the statue like this it will be in an undeployed state this will trick the game into thinking you don't have the statue at all and grandpa's shrine will give you another statue you can do this as many times as you wish until you have hundreds or thousands of statues of perfection you just have to make sure when you get the statue to place it on the ground Hit it with a tool so it's in an undeployed state and just click on the grandpa's shrine again for another statue. Utilizing this method you can fill up a shed with hundreds of these statues for a huge amount of iridium ore every single day. You will never ever have to go to the skull cavern again to farm iridium bars. You can amass 
thousands of these statues and trivialized the game very early on. Not only will you be able to upgrade all of your tools to iridium tools very easily, but you will be able to sell these iridium bars and make an absolute ton of money in the early to mid games. A very quick way to get this statue is to complete just the bare minimum in the game for year one. So sell a couple of crops, make a few hundred thousand gold, sleep until year three, until you get the statue, and then just spam it until you have a shed like this built up to the top with statues. As you can see, I'm getting well over 700 iridium ore every single day. Next up, let's talk about a minor glitch here with Robin. As we know, Robin will not be of use to you on Tuesdays because she goes training. But once Robin passes her desk, if you click on it at the right time, you can actually access um, Robin's interface where you can shop from her, you can do the community upgrade, make house renovations, and get her to construct your lovely farming structures. You just have to make sure that you hit her till when she is close to it on Tuesdays. But once she leaves, you won't be able to use it, so make sure you hit it just the right moment to, to use Robin on a Tuesday. Next up, let's talk about item duplication using co-op. If you place an item on a table, if you and your partner click on that item on the exact same time, you will duplicate the item. We're using radioactive bars at the moment, but you can use any item at all. As long as it goes on a table, you can duplicate it no problem. So you can duplicate a prismatic shard, you can duplicate a galaxy soul, you could even duplicate an iridium quality ancient fruit wine. There are so many things you can duplicate, and this means that you will make an absolute ton of money, even from day one in this game. Because if you were to get your hands on a diamond on day one, even if you were to get your hands on spring wild seeds on day two, you could duplicate those very quickly. You can also duplicate processing machines and statues that go on the ground here. So this is a statue of true perfection and this statue generates prismatic shards on a daily basis. If you strike the item that you can put on the ground at the same time with your partner, you will duplicate that item, resulting in hundreds and thousands of statues of true perfection like this. You can even do this with mayonnaise machines, you can do it with crystallariums, you can do it with anything you can put on the ground. Next up, let's talk about using Robin twice. So if you go to Robin here, you can actually get her to make two buildings at once if you and your partner click on the building interface around the same time. So at the moment, my partner and I are in the building interface. My partner has just got Robin to build a shed. And because I'm already in the interface, I can also get Robin to build a second shed. Using this method, you can make a lot of buildings on your farm very quickly. If you're playing with three or four players, that means you can make three to four times the amount of buildings at once. And finally, we're going to talk about the ice cream glitch. So normally you can only buy ice cream in summer, but you can actually buy it any time of the year. All you have to do is strategically place a horse just around the ice cream stand and the horse will act as the NPC, allowing you to purchase ice cream any time of the year. So if you want to eat ice cream in winter, you can absolutely do that no problem. So I'm going to leave the video there, I hope you enjoyed it. If you're looking for more Stardew Valley content to watch, then check out these videos. This channel has hundreds of Stardew Valley videos now, so if you're looking to binge Stardew Valley content, you won't go wrong with this channel. I hope you have a great week, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.